All right, here we are. This is Goful Amazon episode number 12 with Jen and Tara and then our special favorite guest, <laughs> Stephanie Cantor. So in um, honor of National Breast Cancer Awareness Month, it is October. This episode is all about our boobs. Titty talk. Titty talk. <laughs> so we usually talk about coffee, but today it's going to be about boobs. Um, so, you know, it's funny, um, a couple of things we want to talk about. So, you know, we usually open up always with like a prayer, um, or like a thought or an intention. And, uh, you know, so today we want to talk about like, um, I like to start out with like, we are obsessed with becoming a woman comfortable in her own skin. So, you know, and, and we want Stephanie to kind of take over right now because she has said something that's really great about the fact about like, here we are women in our, in our, you know, in our midlife you know what I mean? Like we're like we're like here we are like you know what I mean in our in our mid our mid mid act, yep. and uh, and it's been funny to like think about the progression of like you know how breasts and what happens with our breasts have been such a pinnacle right. of like our, yeah. our life. It becomes it's like what it's how you identify and it becomes like your first bite of self acceptance or something like you just when you get to the age of being kind of awkward and um, super aware of who you are and how people view you, it's like, oh, who, so-and-so is getting boobs. So-and-so's wearing their training bra. When am I getting my boobs? Like, I wore a training bra when it was basically like, it was like a bunch of bunched up cotton on my chest because I just was like determined just to have nipples. one. Like, you were even just, though, like, just yeah. nipples. Yes. Yeah. 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 It was like basically two tri- triangles. Yeah. And it was just ridiculous. <laughs> and then, you know, like, how big are my boobs going to be? And like, who's touching whose boobs? Yeah. And like, it's just... It's ridiculous. It's all this. It's and it's all how are we being se- yeah. accepted by like the opposite yeah. sex? Yeah. And then you, it kind of evolves into now your boobs like give life, and you watch them completely turn into freak shows when you're pregnant. But then you're the veins, like, like yes. the veins and the engorgement. Yeah. And, oh my god! And then you're feeding your child, and then they become deflated and saggy <laughs> and you look at them and it becomes like you it's like symbolic of oh I'm a mom yeah, yeah. It's, they're I'm just symbolic old. of whatever yeah. phase you're in like yeah. my fake ones my, my implants that I got when I was in my 20s that was like symbolic of being just a completely self-involved 20 something that was just obsessed with like being attractive and right. yeah. fun yeah I don't know it's yeah. just and it's so interesting when we were talking about doing this episode, you know, we, we cornered Stephanie one day at the gym and we were like, oh, we got to talk about an episode. And then somehow it just kind of all came about because I know the yeah. two of you have talked about. Well, I think we were at Oktoberfest yeah. and I, oh. I don't even know how we got into the conversation of it. We just started talking about our Oops. boobs <laughs> somehow. I don't know. It doesn't take much. <laughs> no. I think because we were talking about how, like now that we're older, I mean, I'm 41 and I have implants and I want them out now because they just don't serve any purpose anymore. Like, yeah. you know, I, I'd rather be able yeah. to be like, to be strong and yeah. move my body. I want right. to be able to like run and jump and do all these things. Now they yeah. just like, they're heavy and they get in the way. Right. Yeah. I'm Tara's, always aware of that. Tara has been so aware about talking about it. Like when we exercise and when we're yeah. doing fitness that she's like, I feel like I land on them and they're like, yeah, like they're I feel like they're ready to not a part of her. Like, yeah. yeah. They, like it's this <clears throat> alien thing yeah. that just isn't who I am anymore. Yeah. yeah. I'm like waiting for this moment when I do a burpee and like one just like ruptures <laughs> and then like my one there, boob is wet. There was a time, I swear, <laughs> I will never forget this day. There was a time where, where we were at the gym and Tara was doing some hanging apparatus thing. I don't know, some gymnastics thing we were doing hanging. And literally, like, you were hanging and I was watching you and it's like, it was like I was watching, like, windshield wipers and it was like, you did something and, you, and your tits would go out to the side and come back in. And like, out to the side. And I was like this. I was like, oh my God. Like, no, <laughs> dude, that's really funny that you say that because, wait, do you know what a zoodler is? No. Dude, okay, a zoodler is this this little kitchen tool that you you crank a zucchini into oh, and it makes yeah, the spiral. Right? Okay. Okay. So okay. something about the movement of this zoodler is anytime I zoodle my left boob goes like pop pop it yeah, just it it's like, like on its own side of the it just pops yeah. out the side just yeah. boom boom and it, yeah. it's ridiculous yeah. it just yeah. makes you aware that this yeah we were doing it was like swear to god I was sitting there I was like I must have been like what a little boy looks like with the first time he's ever seen <laughs> sees anything and knows what they are because I'm sitting there and of course I'm like yeah. oh my god I mean it was just like they were like wah 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 <laughs> That's only when they're bound up in a sports bra because they are like saggy and sad now. Like when they're out, like yes, they're heavy. like up and perky, and then the sports bra comes off, and they're yeah. like, Meep. yeah. <laughs> well, and I think that like you know, and what we always talk about is that 
we're as we evolve as women and as we get older like we just want to always become the most authentic versions of ourselves Mm -hmm. and 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 obviously breasts are i mean that's part of who we are and and i know for me like i don't have implants i dream of having implants but i don't think i really would ever do it you know i always play that game like oh i do it i do it and i'm like no i don't think i really would yeah one because sexually i like the feeling like i like the sensation of my nipples is something that's very important to me in you know my sexual life but i i also I want to look like I like I yeah, I'm aging. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like like if I at my age, yeah. if all of a sudden I have these like 25 year old boobs, like yeah. people are gonna be like, really? Well, it's funny because I've been in the operating room with like 70 and 80 year old women who have these massive breast implants, and you're mm-hmm. kind of like, hmm, that does not suit you. Does not go together. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. When I look at them now, it almost is like I guess. I mean, I've made peace with all of these different phases of life I've gone through where I'm like, Oof, that was. A disaster. I've made peace with it. I don't like regret it, but I also don't want to have this constant reminder of like, oh, man, I was really just kind of a knucklehead. Yeah, yeah. You know that, that I really cared that much. Well, what made these... you decide to go and get? Yeah, because them. I think there's very I different reasons why people them. get them. Yeah. I always yeah. wanted them, and um, and I don't know why. I do yeah. like. They're not so much a big thing anymore. I feel like butts are the new boobs or something. Yeah. But for a long time, boobs were like, I mean, this was back in like the Baywatch era. Yeah. Like mm. breast implants, everybody like was Like Pamela getting Anderson them. was yeah. like the yeah. spokesperson. And down, not that I lived in the deep south, but Mason Dixon and below, people get them all the time. Mm. All the time. I mean, I think probably every single person in my bridal party had breast implants. Mm. And um, it was just something I always wanted to do. I'm like, I can go to the gym, I can eat right, I can do all these things, but I can't make myself have nicer boobs. Yeah. And now I, like, I look at pictures of myself, and I'm like, oh, they were, like, so athletic and cute, and mm. they weren't even small. I don't know. I just cared yeah. too much. <laughs> well, the funny thing is, your implants aren't even that big. Like, yeah. I really wouldn't even know that you have implants, to tell you the yeah. truth. Yeah. Because I didn't want that, I wanted it to not be super obvious. I didn't even tell my parents that I was doing it. Really? Yeah. Like, I thought I was going to show up for Thanksgiving, and they weren't going to notice. <laughs> My mom's like, hey. Hey. What's going on? <laughs> I'm like, oh, these chest days, press, mom. I did really good yeah, chest pressing. It's just a really good bra. She's like, oh. No, they're not. No, they're not. <laughs> Which is crazy because the recovery is like six weeks, so you were able to hide. Well, I was living in Virginia Beach, and they were in Delaware. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah, so you just didn't have any idea. Yeah. Interesting. So when I do have a girlfriend, which I think is interesting, I do have a girlfriend that she got them done. She was the first one that I knew got them done. And of course, when she got them done, and I was like, oh my God, can I touch them? Like, I wanted, like, I was, like, I was yeah. kind of obsessed, and she's yeah. like, you want to see them? I'm like, oh yeah. And then I'm like, oh, can I touch them? Because I just didn't know, I, I had no idea what anything, what it was about. But she was, one was bigger than the other. So for her, she was 5'10", she's built yeah. just like us. Um, and she always was super insecure about the yeah. fact that she was uneven and she had, you know, and it was just really hard for her. She always felt like she, as a tall person, she couldn't wear some of the nice clothes yeah. and like some of the pretty dresses that she wanted to wear because she just mm. was so uncomfortable with it. Yeah. So she, she actually got that done, but she, to raise money to have it done, she actually sold her eggs to make, wow. to make money, to be able to huh. like get her boobs on. I wonder if she ever thinks about that. Like she does. Yeah. Yeah. She does, yeah. Like she, that's she all, that's a whole other podcast. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you go back and find those babies? Hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> so it's interesting, like you know, what I need to be on the side of it. Yeah. What made you get them? Um, I, you know, I I was so lean in playing college basketball that I that that's always the first thing that goes when you when you lean out, and I really was like flat board. I didn't. I could wear a tank top and no bra, and it was like it was just like these little bee sting bubbles that would mm-hmm. pop out that's it <clears throat> and so I felt very masculine and I remember you know like I was with my ex-husband at the time and you know you you just start constantly comparing yourself to other girls and you're yeah. like I just want to look like a girl Definitely. like that's yeah. what I, that was what kept going in my brain because I was like all right I'm athletic I'm strong I'm tall you already feel awkward and I'm like I just want to feel like a girl yeah mm-hmm. and so I didn't have like this image of like I want to look like Pamela Anderson I just wanted everything to kind of balance out yeah and look normal and so that my actually told my parents and my mom was like, well, do me a favor. Just think about it for a year. So I did. I sat on it for a year. And then <clears throat> I remember I went to um, this woman who was right on the New York line. And it was kind of like this surreal experience. So I went into this building um, for this consult. And my ex-husband went with me. And we go in. And all the women, like, you can tell all the nurses have had it done. It's like free yes. advertising yeah. right when you go in the door. You're like, oh, okay. They, 
they all look nice. So you go in and I sit down with this woman and she literally like pours, <laughs> pulls out a Playboy magazine and she's like, so how big do you want to go? How big? Oh my And I'm gosh. like, she's like, just flip through, flip through, you know? So I'm looking through and I'm just like, okay, um, I like these, like put these in me. Yeah. <laughs> really? That's how you picked it out through Playboy? Yeah. yeah. And then she shuttles me down the hallway and I financed my boobs. Like I had a monthly payment plan. Okay, I had no money. I was like, yeah. I had just graduated yeah. college, like no job, but I was like, oh, I'm gonna spend like totally ten thousand dollars yeah, on exactly. boobs. <laughs> Smart choice. <laughs> yeah. Seems seems logical. So <laughs> we go into this room and this nurse is waiting, and I'm like, what is gonna happen right now? And the nurse pulls me into the door, and my husband was starting to follow me in, and she's like, no, you can't come in. And he's like, ooh, what's going on in here? So I go into this room and literally the nurse opens up her shirt and she goes, okay, so this is what they're going to feel like. And I'm like, so you just want me to touch your, you just want yeah. me to touch them? And she's like, yeah, touch them. And I'm like, okay. And so I'm like reaching out and I'm like, yeah, they're nice. They're very nice. <laughs> how many times a day does that woman get I know. Up? You wonder that. I have a totally like, different experience. How crazy job, like what a crazy job. Yeah. So you're just going to sit you're the in this model. room yeah. and people are going to touch your boobs all day. Yeah. This is your model. You're the model for that. Yeah. I would get paid for that. <laughs> that's a good side gig <laughs> that could be oh a good side God, gig seriously. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what was your experience it was just totally different well this was in Virginia Beach and there were seriously like a dozen plastic surgeons yeah. it was just a it was a thing down there mm. and so it was I don't know I mean they would have you kind of like holding the implants you're like watching this digitized um recreation you know like the spinning 3d model of yeah. this is how this looks and this is the nipple placement and these are the different incisions and stuff and um and then of course i met with like the surgical coordinator who is the surgeon's wife and she is just as beautiful as she can be not a wrinkle on the whole body <laughs> yeah. and um she was telling me how she's like she had her previous implants for 10 years and she just traded them in for the new ones and it was just <laughs> the weirdest thing yeah but like, I mean I got him done on a Friday and I was like back to work on Monday I oh think. really yeah and they get really swollen mm -hmm. like those like you get scared actually because you you're like wait this wasn't the size I wanted yeah because they like literally like they're puffed up to your chin and, and you're like painful and painful. there's yeah. dr and then I, I'm like now as like 38 year old me I'm like oh my god <clears throat> why did I want them that bad I yeah I just can't understand it yeah. So you but would I, never have made the decision, like today, you would never make the decision to do that? No. Isn't that funny? Yeah. No, I know. And now I kind of, like, I want to get them fixed, but I don't know. It also kind of makes me sad, like what, what you were saying before, where you're like, I just want to, like, let my body age. Yeah. yeah. Like, I guess I'll just Which is hard. know it's what hard my to do natural that. body yeah. would look like if my boobs had just right. <clears throat> gone their normal life cycle. I know. But, yeah. Well, and it's funny to put so much value. And this is, I think, the whole part of this conversation is, like, we put so much value into that. Yeah. Like, even as someone who's now dating, you know, in my 40s, you know, and I'm, like, sitting there, I'm, like, I've nursed two kids with his with my boobs, and I'm, like, oh, my God, when he sees them naked, is he going to be, like, oh, my God, look at those no. flapjacks. But you know what But else? they don't care. <laughs> but you know what else we didn't even really talk about earlier when we were talking about that, how it, like, is such a driver in our lives? How, in the end, how many women are killed, like die because of, the, yes. because of, of something the, breast related. It yeah. seriously is like yeah. this yeah. freaking central figure yeah. in yeah. our lives. Yeah, it is yeah. crazy. the very end. Well, yeah. People. So if we talk about obviously breast cancer awareness month is a you know, good yeah. segue into that. You know, some of our stats, like we were talking about this before is like, here we are, like we're, you know, we're still in a place where one out of eight women typically will be diagnosed with breast cancer. Right. The good news is on that is it typically is not like the death sentence that it was yeah. as it was at the time. So that's the good news. And, and you know, obviously we see it, I see it with patients in the hospital all the time and we know it. I mean, here's three women sitting in a room. So that means that, you know, add five of our friends, one of us, one of us, one, yeah, of, us, one of us is going to get it. Right. right. You know? Um, so that's a, I mean, it's a scary statistic, mm -hmm. you know? And, um, and so I know, that, you know, we did some research and we saw that there's like, what, five things that are controllable to like to have to prevent that, you know, and you know, those are things that we talk about here all the time to try to try the things that we live, we live from, you know, and so I'll just list them because it says like maintain a healthy weight, duh, you know, stay physically active. Again, these are all no brainers, eat fruits and vegetables, 
um, don't smoke and then limit your alcohol consumption. So those are like five things that coming from the what do you know, think they mean National by Breast limit? Cancer <laughs> is that, Foundation. Is there an asterisk by that one? Like, is there? What, what do they say? Like the national thing is like one glass, like a, like one, one glass, glass maybe a day, a day or something really? like that. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Well, I'm way under Three that. Three times a week or something like that. You yeah. know, something. Something. I mean, obviously not a bottle yeah. on a regular basis. You know. I mean, that is like one of the common themes that like, you know, when I'm going through charts at the hospital of women who have have breast cancer, like the one thing that a lot of them have in common is um, a lot of them have like a lot of alcohol in their history or Mm -hmm. some smoking or, you know, that, that a lot of abdominal weight. Yeah. And I know like just from reading in the past that abdominal weight is worse than like the yep. weight that we carry in our hips mm-hmm. and everything. Yeah. So Steve's mom was diagnosed. I know, I feel like I told you this, but I don't know if I told you this or vice versa. When we moved up here and David was just a baby, it was right. It was probably the month before we moved and Steve's mom was diagnosed with breast cancer. And, um, so I mean, she was, she's single and her, One son lived in Colorado and her other son was moving to Rhode Island. And so she went through, she has family in the area, thank goodness. But I mean, she went through a lot of that really when it comes down to, you know, tucking yourself in at bed to bed at night, she was alone, which totally sucks. Oh, I guess my biggest fear. Yeah. Yeah. It's sad to think about, but she, that was how many years ago? I mean, six years ago. And so she's five years in remission, I think after going through all that, but she has She did get reconstructive surgery. Um, And Steve and I talked a lot because she is adopted. Steve has no relationship with his dad. And so he doesn't really know what his His family history is. is. And it makes you think, like, is there, is this how I go? Like, should I find this out? But around that time, we had been reading a lot on just, like, food as medicine and he's like you know what I don't know if I buy into and this I don't have any expertise in this but he (laughs) so let's just say that he was like I don't know if I buy into like cancer is genetic but eating habits and lifestyle habits are definitely genetic yeah it's like you know I don't eat at all the way I did when I was being raised I don't know it's interesting that you say that. So, oh, Tara's a love. I know. I do like. Now, here we go. I can see her. I can oh see my god! She's like, here's my little crank. My yes. cranks in my brain are going. Yeah. So my, you know, like my favorite book about nutrition is um, How Not to Die by Dr. Michael Greger. And one of the things he actually says is maybe it's not that diseases run in family, but maybe that our diets yeah. and lifestyles mm-hmm. run in families. And so the things that get triggered because. It's a combination of genetics and environment, and so maybe we're just re, you know recreating that cycle because we're picking up the same eating yeah. habits that we typically have from our parents, and then mm-hmm. we pass it on to our kids, and then they get those recurrent diseases. Yep. Whereas if you switched up the yeah. cycle and changed how you ate and how you lived, you might be able to end that cycle yeah. and not trigger I was talking to, it's so funny you say that. I remember I was talking to my friend recently. I was talking to one of my, one of my friends, and he's a cop. And, and we were talking about his family history. And so he's someone that, I mean, he's super fit, very healthy. He's the first one in his family that's ever lived like this. Like, so his, mm-hmm. like, uncle died at 57 from, like, mm-hmm. heart disease. His dad's diabetic and, like, you know, sedentary and, like, you know, again, super chronic health, health problems, yep. big heart condition problems and stuff like that. And I was, and I told him, like, I was actually pretty brutal with him. I was like, you're the one who's breaking the cycle. And I said, and you will be there to walk your daughter down the aisle. Yeah. And I said, because nobody else is going to do that, you know? And he's like, heck no, you know? I mean, of course he didn't say heck, but, you know, um, <laughs> but like, it's funny because, you know, here we have the benefit to do that. He's like a big CrossFit athlete and stuff mm-hmm. like that, but he is really breaking the cycle, but left to his own devices, he would eat like shit and because yeah. he was on vacation recently. And I think he, he gained like 20 pounds <laughs> in like a two and a half weeks of vacation eating wow. shit the whole time. Yeah. I literally was like, what are you doing? Like, you are disgusting. Like, stop eating donuts yeah, yeah like you yeah. know what I mean I mean like it was I mean like yeah. the left See, is like a little oh, bit similar like his family yeah. and, and keep in mind his mom is adopted yeah so she doesn't share any genetics with these people but like diabetes was like r- rampant yeah. in, in his family and just very bad kind of southern mm-hmm. food choices right which again we know diabetes hypertension I don't mm-hmm. want to get off topic but just like hypertension high cholesterol mm-hmm. yeah um cardiovascular disease, diabetes, all that stuff, it's lifestyle. Because yeah. there's areas of the world that don't have yeah. it yep. because 
And then you have kids, and you just kind of, like, do what you grew up doing. Right. I I have no, like, whenever, still at age 38, like, I have the most boring family history ever. Like, Mm. literally nothing to list. Yeah. Which is so nice. Yeah. Yeah. And I get scared, too, because, you know, I have a brother that died of cancer at, you know, at 17 years old. But, you know, we can't really tie that to something that I, you know, will be more, you know, susceptible to it. Yeah, I know we know that's that's a whole different subject, but, but you know, but my grandmothers, you know, because they always talk about your family history. Like my grandmothers lived for both of them lived forever, heart conditions and stuff like that. But yeah. you know, the men definitely had more um, physical uh, problems than the, the women did in my family. I've always tell people, I'm like, I'll live forever. <laughs> I'm gonna outlive whatever next husband I have, like mm-hmm. you know, poor yeah. guy. So, and you know what's funny is like my dad, he had a um, an episode of atrial fibrillation where the heart flutters, and he actually went into congestive heart failure where. It, where fluid was kind of backing up into his lungs and stuff like that. And he switched over a plant-based diet and then he's actually got re- getting rid of the alcohol. So mm-hmm. now he'll drink like Odules and yeah. stuff like that during the yeah. week, which he hates. He bitches and moans the whole time. But when he'll cheat on the weekend and have a real beer and, and it's funny because he'll be like, Oh, I don't feel so good. And he'll start, mm. he can start feeling his heart rhythm change and stuff like that. Wow. So to me, like that I don't you. need, I don't need studies. Like yeah. I can, you see, can it. see it. I can see it in my yeah. head. Like, yeah. yeah. I don't need a randomized control study to show me that. Yeah. You know. So back to the boobs, just yeah. because like we're, yeah, yeah, we're, getting we're, getting, we're going into heart yeah. disease and stuff like that, which is fine. But like, do you ever get concerned that that the, that you're having a toxic like foreign body in your um, body? Like, how do you does that ever come up through you, or do you think mine's about that? Saline. Yeah, mine's so, like, saline. Yeah, my saline. Something as well. happened. But it even the sac absorbed. isn't isn't even the, what's the, what's the what's the sac? Hmm. Like the saline is within yeah. a sac. You know, I was such a. I was yeah. 23. I didn't I give know. a shit about it. These I are know. all good, good you questions. Know, I still have that actually I the asked. ID cards for my boobs in my wallet. What do you mean? Like, oh. they gave, they, did they give you, like, your ID card no. that shows, like, the serial number of your implant? I don't think my surgeon was very reputable. <laughs> <laughs> because her place closed down, like, shortly after my sister went to her, so. Yeah, like, yeah. I still have the cards in there, so I wonder if it would actually say. Yeah, because you wonder about that. Like, you think about it. Like, I, cause, like, you know, I mean, like, and that's kind of the hard part, too, because I, yeah. you know, I, I always love that, like, as we go through this podcast, and you and I talked about this a million times, is that, like, what has come up for me is all these little things that I really want to make sure that I'm checking off the boxes to be more and more authentic. Yeah. So, you know, and as we talk about that, like, you know, you really have, like, a foreign object in your body, mm-hmm. you know, that you chose to put in there. Not, yeah. like, if someone has a knee replacement and has to put, like, you know, obviously joint, right. you know, that kind of stuff, is a, right. you know, but... They'll be 11 years old next month. You you really have your boob card right here? Yeah. Oh, my God. This oh my is God. when I was Stephanie Rogers. Oh, how are we my gonna, God. How and how many CCs? 375. 375 CCs. 375. So not that big. Mentor. Is the brand? Oh. Yeah, but it doesn't say what they're made of. But it does say that they're saline. Yeah, but yeah, it shows like what lot they came from and their serial number. Wow, I don't. So know you did why. not get one. Yeah, you got like some backstreet. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I'm just waiting for the moment where they they die. Actually, I think you're supposed to get them exchanged like, every right? ten years. Every ten years. Yeah. So mine are. I got mine when I was 22, so they're almost 20 years old. Yeah. Wow. So you have to be careful. Yeah, so those are things that you, you have to really look, think about. Right. Yeah. Do I go back in? I don't know. Because also uh, it's, it's major surgery. Yeah. Right. Like, do I really want to go? Well, I mean, I wouldn't say it's major surgery. Um, I mean, it, cause we've come a long way. Like you don't mm-hmm. have to do like a big massive incision anymore. Yeah. Like they've gotten really creative about I know, how they can do I it. Cause I can't wait. They're going to make my nipples small again. Cause right now they're like the size Giant, of the bottom like, of your target coffee mug <laughs> over there. <laughs> <laughs> Tune in Tokyo. <laughs> I know they I'm do. Like, they used to be like pepperonis, and now it's like bologna. Right. <laughs> actually, I think that's Got actually a little Oscar Mayer going on over there. <laughs> that's actually what Stephanie and I were talking about at Oktoberfest because we were talking about how giant your giant areolas, our areolas are. You're, like, you're, you're in your bologna. Like they areolas. actually take over the whole size of the boob. It's just like yeah. these big red things that come. So like, it's more salami. More, it's more like salami. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. when I was like still, Genoa, Genoa salami. <laughs> I'm like, oh, there's my areola popping out of my bra again because it can't be contained. <laughs> but I remember I was telling her I had gotten this, like when I was trying to be like sexy and date and all this stuff, I had bought this book about how to, oh, how, to <laughs> how to make your boobs look like stripper boobs, which I didn't know that was a thing, but apparently it is. So I was, There's a book on this? Yes, which I still have it. I'll have to bring it to you. So you take quarters and because if... Because huge areola are not sexually attractive. So if you want small areola, I would take a quarter and then I would outline it with like a nude lip pencil so that I had these drawn in 
So you almost small. oh so then you yeah, put a concealer so I color, around I got and you like color a concealer in. around the rest of the areola. But of course, you know if someone sucks on it, it's like oh well. Or you sweat like you can imagine <laughs> you get, like you know? with like concealer <laughs> all over the, their mouth. So they really like, clown. Yeah, you get some yeah. on your mouth there, but like all around it. <laughs> I love that you put time into work to thinking about that though. You were like, I did my research. Because of course you did your research. I did my research. <laughs> but you know what? Like at this point in your life, wouldn't you be like, yeah, and they're awesome and you'll be lucky to suck on them no matter how big my areolas are. But back then but, you're just like, how can I make this yeah. pleasing to somebody? Yeah. yeah. So pleasing. that's what we keep going back to. Yes. Like, you know, I mean right. that that still we look for yeah. you know, we were looking at well, they're better now about it, but but not really though, because I still like I told you before, I'm like, you know, me, I'm like sometimes even you know I'm you like, catch yourself. I catch myself moment, and I'm yeah. like I have I have a moment, I look down and they're like, you know, seriously like, you know, like I mean like yeah. balloons. I mean, there's just no way to be in your teens and 20s with, like, the wisdom of how much you should admire your own body strength. Like, you just don't get there. You don't get it until you've gone through all of the things that your body could do for you. Like, now I'm just like, I mean, they fed babies. They, like, the body, my stomach, like, yeah, it kind of stinks. It's, like, super flabby. But, like, it carried two gigantic healthy babies. Yeah. 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 You, re- you appreciate it so much better. Yeah. yeah. And the reality, too, is that, like, you know, that validation. Because me, I was always, of course, getting the validation from the boy that I liked or whatever it was. And now it's like, you know, I want the validation from the man next to me to be like, you know, how was your day today? Like, you know, not so much about, like, yeah. I really love your boobs. You know, <laughs> right. I want it to be a little bit deeper than that. Right. Like, yeah. I want it to like, be a little bit more. stuff did you do at work Exactly. Today? Yeah. How are you with what, the patients yeah. today? You know, I mean, how was your like, workout this morning? Right. Things like that. Right. How are the kids? Like, oh, like you know, how, yeah, exactly. How, yeah. you know, I can talk to him more about, like, you know, I'm dealing with my child. That's a trouble. That's, we're having trouble with right now. You know? I can cry. More like I can cry and be like, I'm a disaster right yeah. now. And he's like, okay, what do you need? You know, that's the stuff that I want yeah, instead of like, yeah. you know, I really like your big knockers. Yeah. It's like the evolution of the boob. I know. It is. I know. And again, when Stephanie was talking about that, I was like, oh my God, it's so funny how we really just go from yeah. when are we going to get them? When are we going to get Complete them? Complete aesthetics to... These are now in my way, and I don't. Yeah. They and don't that, serve me anymore. Or having to make the decision to remove them because <laughs> right. it will save your life. Right. Yeah. You know that's right. another thing too. Right. Like having to get to the point of like, oh right. my god, I might have to remove these. Yeah. Yeah. So that I can. I'm actually like, amazed that because you know, like after you have, um, like if you do have breast cancer and you do have a, you know, a mastectomy, you know, a lot of women opt not to do the reconstructive yeah. thing postoperatively. Like they just go with the whole yeah. flat chested yeah. kind I've of. Seen that there is a thing. tattoo oh, artist I've seen in. That. Yes. I think he's in like Chicago. Yes. His name's David something. And he specializes in mastectomy tattoos. Yes. Like and just does yeah. these just unbelievable. Yeah. I've tattoos. seen that. I've seen it's some of that work. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, even if you do get the implants and so that you, like under a shirt. Yeah. Like, to the public eye, nothing, that lady didn't go go through anything. Right. And then you look in the mirror naked and you're like, oh my God, my boobs like betrayed me. Mm-hmm. I yeah. You know, mm-hmm. they like, yeah, it has to be a very difficult, almost killed me. It's just weird. Yeah. I hope to pray that when we are, the three of us sitting here are not one of the eight yeah. that it happens to, you know? Do you buy into the um, statistic of breastfeeding reduces your chance of breast cancer by 50%? I didn't even know about that. So I, had, I have to say, I've never heard of that either. Yeah. I mean, I was lucky enough where I was able to do it. And it was, That's a, I, wasn't it's, I think it's a, if you, if you breastfeed for, I want to say it's more than six months. Oh, but, good. I'm good. I okay. almost two years. Yeah. Now. I mean, I always remember the one where they said having children is actually protective. Mm-hmm. And something maybe that ties in with the whole yeah. breastfeeding thing. I don't know. Is it because of just like, the, it's like this natural purge of hormones that your body is right. meant to kind of create and yeah. I don't know. Or because that's the most natural process right. of that back in, I mean, you know, that is basically we right. were developed to be right. able to do that. Yeah. So right. when that doesn't get activated, like who knows right. what happens with those cells. Right. Because right. cancer is just a cell that's mutated and gone crazy. Yeah. Right. And you don't know where it's going to come from. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's all cancer is. It's just some crazy cell. That just goes nuts. Steve's mom didn't breastfeed. Yeah. I did think of that when it happened. Yeah. I was like, oh. Yeah. Hmm. Not that... Yeah. That, that I'm sure there's like, obviously, I'm sure <laughs> it happens to many, many, many women who do. Yeah. But yeah, I, I remember hearing that statistic and I was like, oh, I, that's good for me because mm. yeah, Axel was a straight up milk junkie. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. And- I mean, I, I know there's been, a, there's a, like a couple myths around it because I, like, I know a lot of people get scared of like soy based products and stuff like that mm-hmm. and like there being a link to cancer there but it's funny I've talked to like a lot of the um um OB uh, um OB gynecology people at work and 
there's a couple people on the general surgery side that disagree, but all, almost all the OBGYNs are like, no, there's absolutely like no correlation between soy products and breast cancer. Because mm-hmm. if you look at like people in Asian areas, yeah. their incidence of breast cancer is astronomically low. And mm. they eat a pretty yeah, heavily soy. based, yeah. soy based diet. Yeah. Um, which I think is interesting. Yeah. So. Yeah. So I know I don't, I don't, I don't, that my feeling is, and I know it might be sound stupid or not, but like, I feel like we, I don't think anybody really knows where it happens and where it comes from. You know, I think that like, you know, I mean, again, I think it comes from one cell yeah. That like definitely come is be- yeah. all of a sudden is off and then the thing yeah. is it just it's a great it because yeah. I've seen them under a microscope and it's like a crazy a mirror really? that has like these tentacles and it just yeah. goes, wow. it just goes oh yeah it's crazy right mm. yeah my one my one belief and it's not backed by any evidence at all it's just my own belief is like like hormones and the foods like if even if you mm-hmm. look at like our kids now like especially our girls who are developing, developing faster so much faster and earlier than others you know there's a part of me that's like hormones and all that stuff cannot be good for us. No, I know. Um, and I'll never I, take. I mean, I'll, I wouldn't I'm not be surprised if that never there's something that yeah. can, you know, make uh, an abnormal cell maybe proliferate into a yeah. cancer cell. Yeah. So I don't think I don't think excess hormones are good. And actually, I think that's probably maybe that's why we go through menopause. Like maybe it's like a natural process our body does to kind of get rid of that hormone mm-hmm. because maybe mm-hmm. it is maybe it is cancer producing. Yeah. Well, you know, like as you get, I think it's age 35 where your likelihood of having multiples if you get pregnant is significantly higher yeah. because you're, they're basically like lemmings jumping off the cliff yeah. where they're like, the party's over. Yeah. <laughs> you guys take them all. <laughs> just go. Just so go. you start just releasing multiple <laughs> eggs every month because we're just like, fuck it. Like, yeah. It, we, don't have, we don't have a shot. We should get on out of here. And so your chance if you do get pregnant of having yeah. multiples, it's like your, your body knows what it's doing, you yeah. know, when it gets to a certain point. It goes it goes through. I, and that's, I like, I the whole like getting tubes tied and getting things out and like I just the female especially the female system is just like so complex I don't want to I would never want to mess with that I feel like it's this first domino where it's like oh you got your tubes tied no big deal oh but now you have right like uterine cysts and all these issues every time you get your period and oh now you're in we're just gonna because maybe you created like a backflow somewhere and because I my birth control is like I have an IUD but I have the non-hormone because I was like again like I just wanted to not I just wanted to block them like but I just don't want any of the hormone stuff because again I was on the pill forever yeah yeah. and I never went back on it. I mean, I will never ever do any nope. kind of anything like that because yeah. I just don't ever want to. And it was funny because Steve and I had like, we were joking about getting pregnant or something like that and I was like, oh my God. I was Because we're so old. I was like, we, and like that first of all is never going to happen. I said, but if it did, I, I said, I, I was like, then those things are like champions because they're getting through like my device, yeah, yeah. you know? And, um, and so then I talked to my friend Bethany and she was like, yeah, just so you know, she's like, at this point in our lives, she's like, you have a better chance of winning the lottery than getting pregnant. And yeah. I'm like, oh, I should have a lottery. Do you, know, yeah. do you know if you did get pregnant that you would be considered a geriatric pregnancy? Yeah. And I was with crazy? Cooper. I was with Cooper. Really? Was geriatric pregnancy. Isn't it over, what is the age? Over 35. Cut off, over 35. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was over 40. No. no. They, I'm like, they... I am not Janet Jackson. I'm like, I do not need to have a baby, you know, that late in life. I'm like, no, I'm all set. No. Well, my friend Lisa, her first, she got pregnant on an IUD. <laughs> but I feel like she's like super fertile because she actually got pregnant the second time. I think she was on the pill. He, I mean, there was a condom, but I think there was. But also that's not a, fer- like, that's not being super fertile. Like, that she gets pregnant on an IUD. I mean, that's like maybe it, that's like it, maybe it was like reposition reposition because that's not a that's not like a because fer- that means that something right. somehow something's passing right. Yeah. So that doesn't mean yeah. that you're super fertile. Like it's super fertile um, yeah. would be extra. Or she has a giant like cervix. I don't know. Yeah, giant <laughs> cervix. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he just had super sperm. Or he's got power sperm. Yeah. 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 That's so you got pre workout. That's probably mm-hmm. every guy's like dream. I think they all think they have power sperm. Seriously. It's like a badge of honor super or something sperm. like that, right? <laughs> I, well, I got her pregnant on an yeah. IUD. Yeah. <laughs> you know how my sperm rolls? Like, <laughs> I like how you went all ghetto on that. I know. Yeah. I have my like, arms up. Like, yeah. Yeah. Our giant blonde. You know, you should see her right now. She's like as preppy as can be. She's all ghetto all of a sudden. I'm from Denver, Delaware. <laughs> what do you know about mean that? Mean streets of What do you know about Delaware? that? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. So we do have to think about like, so this month, October, obviously 
Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Um, I know that our local CrossFits and gyms are doing these fundraisers called Boobs for Barbells, um, which I know our gym is doing Next Grace. Week? Yeah. Yep, says so Grace. So that is that if you've never done that, go. It's fun. It's 30 cleanings. 30 clean and jerks. Yep. As fast as you can. It's a good time. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You should go on Saturday. Jokes. That would be great. Oh, my. Is it- the first time I did it, I did it in three minutes. So just so you know, it doesn't take that long. And then, then what do you do? You're done. You die. You just go home? Yeah. First you're of all, done. nobody can base anything on your time because you're a psychopath. <laughs> right. You did the merge like, oh, like I did two it. times yeah. in three days with weighted vests. <laughs> I know. So, and then probably went and, did, and then offered to take my kid for the day. I did take yeah. for the day. <laughs> I know. So let's just roll back and like get so to normal like... people's standards. She's like, oh, you can totally do it in three minutes. And you're like dying inside. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you call it the Murph. <laughs> what is it called? Is that oh, what it Murph. is? Murph. It's called Murph. Murph. Okay. Murph. The, no, it's the, the Murph. The Murph. <laughs> the Murph. Okay. For me, I believe I was sitting in comfy leggings you were. and with sweatshirt and eating graham crackers watching that. So, to me, it's the mer. I love that your cat's, like, eating himself out right yeah. now. <laughs> you would, too, if you could. I totally would. Yeah, you would, too. You would, too. Hi. Oh, my God. All right. Is there anything else that we have to, like, talk about with all this stuff? No, I think we went Because we could go off the rails yeah. for hours as we were before we even started. Anything else we have to add? No. Take care of the no. tatas. Take care yeah. of your tatas. Take, Take care, care of your tatas. Take care of yourself. Yeah. Be kind to yourself. Yeah, and it's not all about your boobs. Yeah. Like, right? That's the message right now. No. Love your body. The way it Be is. Do you. Do you. All right, here we go. End quote. Beauty is not in the face. Beauty is a light in the heart. Aw. Aw. Episode 12. <laughs> Have a great day.